Hello and welcome to this campfire session. I'm Dr. Tamara Pfeiffer and I am a medical biohacker. Today I'm going to share with you some secrets about sleep and how it can affect everything from memory to weight gain to diabetes to inflammation and even more. I grew up in a world where sleep was for the weak. Sleep when you're dead, they said. Work hard, party harder. How many of you have heard those lines? How many of you recognize these? And how many of us have really integrated this into our psyche? In today's modern lifestyle, there's just so much to do. There's so much work and traffic and kids and studies, and then there's exercise and self-improvement. There just aren't enough hours in the day to do it all. What is the first thing we sacrifice? It always tends to be sleep. How many of you have sacrificed sleep for work, to finish that project, for studies, to study for an exam? How many of you have sacrificed sleep to finish binge watching their favorite show? I've done it a few times. How many of you do it often? I want you to close your eyes for a second. I want you to imagine that feeling. You're lying in bed, you've just set your alarm, you have a huge day ahead of you the next day. And as you're about to switch off, suddenly your heart starts racing. Your mind is thinking of things that happened years ago and thinking of the solutions for that. Feeling guilty about things that you said to somebody two months ago. That feeling of anxiety starts to build. And as it's building, you realize, how much less sleep you have. You're watching that clock, you're watching the time tick over, you're constantly calculating how much time you have left to get the rest you need to rest for the next day, to work optimally, to function well. And anxiety is the enemy of sleep. There's that group, that group that struggles to fall asleep. And then there's the other group. How many of you fall asleep really easily. But between 12 and 2, 3 a.m., suddenly you wake up and you have a little bit of anxiety or you just sleep very, very lightly until just before your alarm goes off. And just before that alarm goes off, suddenly you could sleep perfectly for three hours. How many of you feel that? I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that later and why it happens. So we all need sleep and we know we need sleep. We know what we get like without it. We know we get cranky, we know we're forgetful, we get mental fuzziness. We know what happens the next day, we eat badly, right? We get crazy cravings, especially for things like sugar and starch. And that's not you, that's just your biochemistry. Those calming down brain chemicals like serotonin that make you happy, his building blocks live in sugar and starch. What's the other thing we always crave when we're tired? Chocolate, right? Chocolate is the brain's way of giving you magnesium. But unfortunately, we're misinterpreting the signals. So cocoa beans, nuts and seeds are very high in magnesium in nature but we love to misinterpret it as chocolate. And sadly, modern day chocolate doesn't have any magnesium in it. But the reason we crave it is we want our muscles to relax. We need to get to sleep. But why? Why do we need to sleep? If you think about nature, we're really vulnerable when we sleep. We're basically shutting our brains down for a good eight hours. Anybody could sneak up on us. Anything could sneak up on us. So it really must be worth the risk for the brain to take itself offline for that amount of time. I've done some research and I found a few primary things that could answer this question. Number one is waste disposal. Our brain uses a lot of energy. And when we use a lot of energy, we create a lot of waste. We need that waste to be taken out and disposed of as quickly as possible. 
when we go to sleep, our brain cells actually shrink 60% to make it easier for our little brain janitors to get in there and clean up the mess as quickly as possible. These brain janitors are called glial cells, and they're basically there to take out the trash as efficiently as they can. The result is that you have a restored brain when you wake up, you're refreshed, you have a clear mind, and your memories are good from the day before. So talking about waking up with a clear mind, the next thing is the filing system. Our neurons and our neural connections strengthen while we're sleeping. It solidifies those pathways and memories that we made just before. And it helps us to learn those tasks and make them concrete while we're sleeping. This makes accessing that information when you wake up much more easy. It enables you to react best as you changes and to danger and to answer questions when you need to and to find those words. It also helps you put several pieces of a huge puzzle together or learnt information together to best be prepared for any situation. It massively increases your productivity. So it's been shown in research that napping before an exam can increase your ability to recall information in a much faster and more organized way. Sleepless nights can make us gain that unhealthy belly fat under the muscles, that visceral fat that causes inflammation and makes you at more at risk to diabetes and heart disease, and it can make you lose muscle mass. Researchers even spotted changes in gene expression at the protein level after a few sleepless nights. Your muscle breaks down and your body becomes less able to release body fat and much more capable of holding on to it. So, let's get sleeping. We are solar powered. We are supposed to go to sleep when the sun goes down and wake up when the sun rises. This is how it works. You have a little gland called a pineal gland that sits on your optic nerve right there between your eyes. Back in the day before we had all the artificial lighting, as the sun sets and it got darker, it sends signals through your pupils that there was less light and your pineal gland started to make your sleep hormone melatonin. As it got darker and darker, melatonin started to rise, you got more and more tired and eventually you fell asleep. In the morning, the opposite happened. The light came through our eyelids, through our pupils, hit the pineal gland and the melatonin or sleep hormone started to go down and your awake hormone or cortisol started to rise. This woke you up made you alert, made you ready for the day. This is called your circadian rhythm. The melatonin should be highest at night and your stress and awake hormone should be highest during the day. If there are changes in these fluctuations and changes in these hormones and changes in these rhythms, it can cause massive disruption within our body. Melatonin is a powerful antioxidant and cortisol is your natural firefighter. He's the guy that puts out all the fires. So if he is too low, then we don't have our mechanisms for controlling inflammation naturally. So that's the chemistry. We have a cortisol melatonin balance, but there's another guy that always sneaks in. Remember we spoke about the people who fall asleep easily but wake up around midnight to 2 a.m. and then can't sleep very well at all until just before the alarm goes off? Well, sugar is the culprit there. Sugar and your stress hormone cortisol, they hold hands too. So now the seesaw is doubled up. What happens is we have supper at around 6 p.m., 7 p.m., and if your sugar is well controlled, then the sugar will maintain itself throughout your sleep cycles. If you have poor sugar control, so if you are waking up at 2, 3 a.m., if you are starting to put on weight around the belly, if there is diabetes in your family, 
what happens is that your sugar spikes after dinner and then takes a very sharp drop. Your body can't survive with so little sugar. And so it needs to switch on a little switch that gets your liver to pump sugar into the blood. That little guy that switches the switch, he's called cortisol and he is your awake hormone. So now your awake hormone's up, your sleep hormone's down. They can't exist together. As it takes three to four hours for that melatonin to come up again, you fall asleep just before your alarm goes off. So sugar just before bed, bad, bad idea. And if this is happening to you, I strongly recommend that you have a nice, good plant fat, like some nuts or some avo or some protein just before you go to sleep. It helps to regulate the sugar and gets you through your four sleep cycles. The other thing that happens is that when that rhythm is out, your inflammatory levels go through the roof and they found massively increased rates of autoimmune disease, inflammatory disease, and even cancers in night shift workers and people who don't keep their sleep cycles in their natural way. So that beautiful melatonin hormone that you're producing at night is a powerful antioxidant. In fact, they use it with cancer patients at very, very high levels. It helps to fight against cognitive decline, keeps your brain sharp, and strengthens your immune system. Now there's a little thing called sleep debt. So I know you're wondering to yourself, yeah, yeah, I work hard during the week, but I'll catch up on the weekend. Unfortunately, science has proven that we can't do that. It doesn't work. So we accumulate sleep debt over time. This is the difference between the amount of sleep we should get nightly and the amount we are getting nightly. And we can't make it up. This sleep debt actually mimics all the hallmarks of aging. It can increase the severity of conditions like diabetes, high blood pressure, and obesity. Even our pain threshold changes. If we've had insufficient sleep, we feel pain up to 15% more. So what do we do about it? All artificial light, including LEDs, your tablets, your cell phones, your smartwatches, your smart TVs, all of these are emitting something called blue light, and that blocks the production of melatonin. Now, blue light is very good during the day because it boosts your alpha wavelengths, which is very good for focus and concentration and being alert, but it suppresses delta brain waves, which induce sleep and relaxation. Now, there was a very, very interesting research article that was written and it was published in the Journal of Endocrinology and Metabolism that showed that having artificial light after sunset can reduce your melatonin production by up to 85%. That's massive. So this is what I want us to do. Number one, we are putting blue light filters on all of our screens. You can put a timer on this. So around sunset, the blue light filter switches on your phone, on your laptop, on your smart TV, on any of your screens. You can even guys buy special glasses from certain pharmacies. If you don't want to put the apps on everything, just put on the glasses at sunset. They look a little nerdy, but that's cool too. And then I want you to limit screen time just before bed. If you can, up to an hour. The second thing is, let's try and be solar powered. Let's try and live by natural light. If you are able to sleep with your curtains open, that you can go to sleep as the sun sets and you can wake up with the sunrise, that's first prize. Second prize is switch off all of your lights when the sun sets. Only leave our necessary equipment and entertainment if you need to with your blue light filter on. And then you can even get special lighting now that mimic a sunrise to help you wake up naturally in the mornings. Number three, please only use your bedroom to sleep and for intimacy. Make sure that it is the perfect environment for those things. Make sure that it is cool, dark, and quiet. 
The optimal temperature for a good night's rest is 16 to 20 degrees Celsius. Don't make a bedroom into a multi-purpose room. Have an entertainment area and keep your bedroom for sleep and intimacy. So I'm going to give you a bonus one. It's called power naps. All the big companies are hatching onto this. Ben & Jerry's, Google, Zappos, they all allow their employees to have private resting spaces where they can have a quick cat nap. They found that these employees were more productive, made fewer mistakes, think of far more innovative ideas, are more creative, and get far more work done if they're properly rested. So, if you want to nap effectively, the ideal nap lasts 15 to 20 minutes. You should do it after lunch, but before 3 p.m. Keep it at 15 to 20 minutes, otherwise we might go into a REM cycle, and then you get sleep inertia. That's that grogginess when you wake up. You want to wake up sharp and alert. The research has shown that it improves your cognitive performance for up to three hours after a nap. So what is the cost of sleep deprivation? The irony of it all is that many of us are suffering from sleep deprivation so that we can get more work done. But the drop in performance ruins any potential benefits of the additional working hours that we're putting in. Please take the time to invest in your rest. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey, for opening up your minds, for taking in my suggestions, and for putting into action your value for better sleep. So, I wanted to give you guys one little bonus hack that I recently learned on a flight. Why should you always take a sun hat on a nighttime flight? Number one, this is your hack. Number two, find the perfect travel pillow. Number three, always take a scarf with you. Tie the two ends of the scarf together.